For this video, we're going to take a look at controlled bones. And to demonstrate, we'll be using this PNG of a tentacle. To begin, I am going to add some bones to this graphic. So coming over here to the layers, I can right click on that graphic and choose to group with selection. And then once we have that group, right click on it and then choose to convert to bone. So now with that established on frame zero, I'm just going to go in and add some bones. So click on the add bone tool and I'm just going to come in here and draw out some bones. Now I'm doing this pretty fast and I might even want to go in if I were doing this, let's say for a real production and use the curver for this to create a more nice bendy look for the tentacle. But I believe this should work for our purposes. Now I want to go over here to the image and grab the select bone tool. And we're just going to use the lasso here to lasso around all the bones and then come up to link bones. So now if I were to go anywhere past frame zero on that bone layer, I can come in here and you can see we're able to move this around. It might not be the smoothest because we didn't really set up a smart warp or anything for this. However, it's working close enough to where we need it for this demonstration. So what we want to do next is let's just remove those keys and I'm going to go to frame 12 just to have a little bit more time here. And I'm going to grab the transform bone tool and this first bone here, I'm just going to rotate it up like so. And when we do this, it follows suit with probably how we expect it to. Since all these bones are linked, they're just going to kind of follow along with what's going on here. But they're not really moving themselves. They're just kind of being manipulated by this first bone. Well, let's come over here and click on the select bone tool and choose that second bone from the list. Now, if we come up to bone constraints, you'll see that we have a section called control bones. And here we have the ability to put in angle, position, and scale. We're just going to do angle for right now. So let's just click on angle. And here you can see we have access to all of the bones. I started at the top and worked my way down. So B1 is going to be the first bone. B9 will be the last bone. In this case, I want B2 to be controlled by B1. So I'm going to click on B1. And you'll see right when I do this, it automatically changes the way this is looking. And if I close this and we come in here, you can see that as this bone bends up, so does this one, even while it's following this bone's endpoint. So it goes up and this one goes up too. So if we were to come back here and let's just say select all these bones, go to your control bones, go to your angle and choose B1, we can see here by the time it gets to 12, it's going to be really wrapped around because all of them are rotating the same way that that control bone is rotating. And this applies for scale as well as position. So if you were coming in here, let's say on frame 12, we could grab this bone and let's just move it a little bit like this. And let's also shrink it up. Well, if we come back here and select all those bones, except for the first one, go to your bone constraints. We could come down here to position and choose B1 and then B1. So now with that set, and if we come in here and play this, you can see that the bones are definitely moving and they're also shrinking a little bit as well. And again, they're just following suit with that original work with the bone. So I'm going to come back here and let's just select all these bones again, go to control bones, and I'm going to disable this now for position and scale. And we're just going to focus on the angle for a moment. Now, you'll notice that we have delay here on the side, and we can do this for all three properties. This will delay the action by as many frames as you indicate. And this can create a nice delayed effect and can help for certain animations. So right now everything is at 100% and it's following the motion of that original bone as it does it. So there's no delay, there's nothing going on. So let's come back here now 
and I'm just going to click on the second bone and come over here to the frame delay and enter in two. And you can see that this is already changing the way it looks. Now I'm going to go to the next bone, enter in four, and then six. And we're just going to keep going here. So eight, 10, And we have a few more down here, 12, 14, and then 16. So I'm just gonna make another animation for this now. I'm going to come in on frame 24, and we're just going to move this up a little bit like so. And I'll just zoom out a little bit. So if we come back here now and we see this play out, you can see that it has like this nice little delay. So at the end, when the first part of the tentacle stops, the remaining parts are still trying to catch up to that. And it creates this nice little illusion that everything is sort of falling along and has its own physics. So maybe on frame 72, I can come back here and kind of go down like that. So now you have something that looks kind of like this and like that. And again, it kind of has this nice little bend to it as you go about and do it. And let's say for instance on, you know, this animation right here, you really don't like the way this is curling up. Well, just come over here to your bone constraints, go in there, and we can start to adjust just how much strength is being applied to that. So maybe you come back here and you only want, you know, let's say 70 and then you want maybe just a little bit less, like 80% here. And you can see that it is making those changes in real time. And I'm also just gonna come in here and speed this up a little bit. So come over here and go to like frame two. So it goes like this and down like that. And you can see we can adjust the strength and it will also alter that. So if you wanted to do certain bends, certain ways, you can do that. You can adjust the way it's interpolating that strength and so the less strength, the less influence it'll have. And again, the same applies for your position. So if you wanted to adjust the position, you can see we have 100% and 100%. That stands for X and Y. So if an example, you want to flip something, you could change that to negative 100. And the same applies for scale. So if you wanted to adjust 100% of the scale all the time, you can do that or you can change it. So control bones can really help for certain animations, and hopefully this gives you a nice demonstration of what can be achieved.